sits down with NBA legend and Lakers head coach Byron Scott for an exclusive interview at an amazing Bel Air estate. You know, no matter where I've gone, I've always talked about coming back to L.A. no matter what. Obviously being able to be here and as, as a coach of this unbelievable organization, you know, it's a dream come true and I'm just uh, continuously living that dream. a behind-the-scenes tour of the amazing estate where Diggs TV exclusive interview with Byron Scott took place at 864 Stradella Road. Designed by renowned architect Paul McLean and completed in August 2014, this modern masterpiece is a sight to behold. From the moment you enter, you can feel a true sense of seamless integration between luxury and utility. Featuring sweeping panoramic city views beyond compare, this exceptional house is an unprecedented multi-sensory experience. Every inch of this seven bedroom, 12 bathroom architectural dream home exhibits sharp attention to fine detail and composition. Simply put, this flawless home has set the new standard for luxury homes in Bel Air. This one-of-a-kind custom home is offered for sale at $49,995,000 by Michael LaMontagna and Brandon Williams, both of Hilton and Highland. For more information, visit www.864stradella.com. The thing that sticks out for me right now is that as of right now, today, uh, was just getting that call from Mitch and Jim Buss uh, saying, you're going to be our new head coach. That sticks out to me because that was a dream. That's something that I had thought about when I got into coaching was hopefully one day I would be able to coach this unbelievable organization that I have so much pride and passion for. And for that to happen that day for them to call me and say, you know, you're going to be our coach and we got to set up a press conference, we got to get the contract done and all that stuff. You know, I, I was elated. The next one would probably be, be when we win the championship because that's my goal, you know, to be here as a head coach and bring this team back to what we're so used to doing and that's winning. Everybody that seems to come here that doesn't live here comes here with big hopes and dreams. And being a person who's been here, you know, from you know, childhood until adulthood, you know, I get a chance to see those people on a day-to-day -day basis. And most of them, when I tell them where I'm from, they don't believe I'm from here. You know, because I don't have that, I guess, that desire to try to be some mega star or anything like that. I just want to be Byron. Never thought about when I was growing up that I needed a you know, mansion or anything like that because uh, I never really equated that to success. You know, I think everybody has their own level of success. I think I've been pretty successful in the things I've done you know, as, a, as a player and as a coach, but I, I never equate that with materialistic things. But I had the luxury of growing up with both parents, uh, being at home and being very humble and, and very understanding on what it took to try to get to a successful level in their eyes. And, and living in that household for so many years and not having kids of my own, trying to raise them with that same mentality. And also just to have that same, uh, that same feel around what it, what it does take to be successful. You know, and you also just want your kids to be as humble, hopefully, as you are. You want to leave, that, you want to leave a good example. But the kids' camps and the things that I've done over the years are just things that I have, that I have a lot of passion for. I, I don't do anything that I don't have passion for. I, I really don't. I think it's a waste of my time. And when I give basketball camps is because I love kids. I love interacting with kids. I love teaching kids. I love for them to be able to touch me and understand that I'm not just the guy you see on TV every now. I am a real person that really truly cares about their well-being and I want them to have a better life and, and hopefully give them a better chance to be successful. You know, it's great for me to hear five years from now that this kid didn't make it in the NBA, but he's a doctor or he's a lawyer, he's very successful. And, and that to me is the most important part. If you can impart some of your wisdom on them uh, and hopefully some of your work ethic and, and your beliefs, you know, then this kid has a better chance to be successful, man or woman. Just because you have a lot of money don't mean you have to give a lot of money. And people that don't have a lot of money, you know, they're still trying to give money or they're trying to give their time. Just as long as you're giving in, in some form or fashion, you know, that, that's enough. I got an interesting letter uh, a little over a year ago 
uh, from a lady who was doing something for the military guys who were coming back from duty and trying to get themselves readjusted in society. And, you know, a lot of these guys are going on interviews, but they don't have the clothes or the look, whatever you want to call it, um, to go on interviews, so a lot of them wouldn't go. You know, so I just wanted to do something. You know, I had a closet full of suits, you know, that I wasn't going to be able to wear anymore because they told me I got to change my style. So, <laughs> so I had to get rid of a bunch of suits, and I thought this was an unbelievable call to do it for. And um, we ended up going there that day and meeting a lot, of, a lot of the guys from the military who had been coming back, and they were so thankful and grateful that it just touched my heart. And, and for us now, we're going to be involved with it every single year to try to make uh, make some other guys aware of what's going on and also just to make the, you know, the city of Los Angeles a little bit more aware of, of helping our military when they return because again we owe so much to them. You know, the reason that you and I are sitting here today and talking is because of what they do and if they wasn't doing what they were doing we probably wouldn't be sitting here so I think we need to give them a little bit more respect and honor them a little bit more uh, in trying to help them as much as possible. You know, first of all you got to feel good about yourself. You know, so whatever you put on is going to personify that anyway. And, and like you said, when I'm on the court, uh, the one thing that I do feel is that I'm in charge. You know, I'm the leader. I'm going to lead these guys. And I have that type of confidence. So I think when you put your clothes on, and whatever style that may be, you know, the first thing you got to do is feel confident in who you are. You're going to have a lot of people watching you, as I do, you know, when you're on that court. Um, and that's why I always try to keep that even keel so you never see if, uh, you never look at me and can tell if we're really winning or losing most of the time. And it's the same thing on the golf course as well. Even after a bad shot, I have to just kind of let it go. It, it was a place I used to go to called Darby Park uh, when I was little. And I went back there last year for the first time, probably in about 15, 20 years. That was kind of my little getaway. Uh, it wasn't too far from where I lived, uh, where I grew up in Inglewood, California. I can kind of just walk to it. It'd probably take me 30 minutes to walk to it. There was one place that I can go to and either go to the gym or just sit in the bleachers and just think about what I wanted to do. Uh, and, and it was great for me to be able to go back there, you know, after all these years, walk in the gym and see how now, how small that gym is compared to what I used to think, how big it used to be, and then walk back to the field and sit on the bleachers and just kind of reminisce. So that's still a place every now and then because that's kind of in between where I live and where uh, my mom, you know, lives or where my mom used to live that I can still go back to and kind of reflect. Well, I mean, I, I mean, when you walk around or you drive around, obviously there's a lot of new things going on, a lot of new changes and a lot of new buildings and things like that. But from a economical standpoint, you know, obviously changes are made every, seems like every five, 10 years. You know, so when I do come back to LA, I always see something different, but the people are still the same. You know, for the most part, the people are still the same. And that's the thing that I enjoy about LA.